Er Erebonia border, Hawk and Gate. That's what she said. Of course it's huge. It acts as the sole entrance to the Empire, and is a rampart that protects Liberal from foreign threats. After it was destroyed in the war ten years ago, a much more robust wall was built in its place. Standard military reaction, bigger equals better. This is the closest you get to the Empire in this game, fun fact. Which means beyond this point is no longer Liberal. Yeah. It's the territory of the Erebonian Empire which stands beneath the emblem of the Golden Stallion. The Erebonian Empire. Hmm. <sighs> well, enough staring for one day. Let's go meet with General Morgan. There are some barracks right there to the side of the gate. Maybe we'll find him in there. Probably not. Okay, let's go. Let us go. Before that, uh -oh. I want you to remove those bracer emblems you've got pinned on your chests. Ruh row We're going in incognito even. You know what I'm talking about? Things won't be pretty if General Morgan sees those. Oh, I forgot all about that. <laughs> Stell and Joshua reluctantly remove their bracer emblems. Somehow I feel all weird doing this. Weird style. Yeah, there's something that just doesn't feel right about this. Don't worry. That's proof that you started adjusting to being a bracer. So we can kind of t t t t take a look around here. Not a whole lot going on. Though, though we are about to meet a very important character. A familiar face if you've played the later games. <laughs> this dude may look a little familiar. What a surprise! This is my first time eating Laboros cooking, but it was rather delectable. Blonde haired man. I'm glad you liked it. Nolan. Nolan Ryan! He used to be a baseball player. If you head to town, there's a number of other places where you can eat great liberal cooking as well. You enjoy this trip of yours, all right? That I will do, believe me. If this is the kind of food I can get in a border dive like this, then I truly am in for a feast elsewhere in this land. Well, excuse me for having my bar here on the outskirts of the country. Before you go feasting on the finer things, how about a glass of wine? I know it's not high-end exactly, but the taste is worth the price. Hmm. Well then, maybe I will. Clearly th th the same voice actor for both of them. Do you <laughs> think this guy is... He looks like a traveler from the Empire, if you ask me. Spot on. Mmm. This wine is quite good. If this is called cheap wine, then Liberal must be a wonderful country of tastes. I think this only adds to Queen Alicia's prestige as a ruler. Cool. Good day, and welcome to our humble establishment on the outskirts of Bos. Since this is a bar, we've got wine to drink and food to eat. Just don't expect anything too elaborate. Uh, okay. You can buy vegetable sandwich here. And potluck in a shell if you would like. One time when Noofy played a baseball game when he accidentally talked suggestive about a baseball player. <laughs> Classic. Freudian slip even. Amelia Bedelia! That blonde haired man over there is rather handsome and well dressed. But after talking to him, I found him to be a little. odd. Okay. 
Marco. Marco Polo. I'm a merchant from the Erebonian Empire. And I'm on my way to Bos. Cool. Bos style. Do, 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 do. So we want to go over to, to the barracks. Da, 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 da. Carlos! Carlos Cabrera! He's... he... he's a Spanish wrestling announcer. I'm thinking about visiting the Empire. Doesn't look like anyone's here to fill out the necessary paperwork for leaving the country, though. Well, it doesn't really matter to me, since I just live my life on a whim. In fact, the... In fact, the only reason I decided to travel to the Empire is, well... Because it occurred to me. <laughs> okay. That's fun. Sentry. Has no name. He, he's just Sentry. Welcome to the ha Hacking Gate. Hey, wait a minute. Did you come here by way of the Ice and Road? I sure did. We can't get into Erebonia! Oh no! Good times. How in the world did you guys get through? I killed a bunch of people. The barricade hasn't been lifted on the ice and road yet. We came here on an errand for Mayor Maybell from Bose. Do you think you could get us in to see General Morgan? Joshua explained what the mayor requested without disclosing his, his identity. Well, that's understandable. In that case, I could definitely get you in to see the general, but unfortunately he's out at the moment. That sucks. He probably went to a baseball game. He's actually spearheading a number of searches right now. It looks like our timing was bad. You don't happen to have an idea when he might return, do you? <laughs> I think he'll be back sometime today. Baseball style. There's a bar in that rest stop over there, so why don't you wait there for him? I'll let you know when he gets back. The bar? You mean the place that we were just at? Why is there a bar in a place like this? Like that time someone lost their lunch oh, over a sports-related injury. Obviously because this is the border with the Empire. The screening process for those entering and leaving the country is really strict, so there are a lot of travelers who have to wait quite a bit. <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. In that case, it's understandable that you would need facilities like an inn and a bar. Well then, I'll take you up on your suggestion and wait over at the bar. Bar style. There's a bar in that rest stop over there, so why don't you wait there for him? I'll let you know when he gets back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good day to you all, my fine friends. <laughs> you appear to be citizens of Liberal, but may I ask if you are traveling to the Empire? So keep this guy in mind. He'll be very important throughout the entire series. Nope, we're just here on an errand. We're not traveling to the Empire. You appear to be a citizen of Erebonia yourself. What about you? Are you here to visit the Liberal Kingdom? Huh. I'm glad you asked. I am indeed a visitor in Liberal, both for work and for... pleasure. He's also one of the funniest characters. And you. You say you're running an errand, but I can see your true colors. I know exactly who you are. One, one, one time when during a hot dog eating contest when someone got disqualified with a blue child. That's against the rules, you know? Rule rule number one. Don't blow chunks. Who are we? Indeed. Your braces, no? How did you know? We removed our bracer emblems. Wait. 
Are you trying to tell us that you're in the same profession? It's true that there are guild branches in the Empire, but actually I'm not a bracer. I just know several people in the guild. That's all. He, he certainly does. And there's an air about you that reminded me of them. So I just thought I'd ask. Those are some excellent deductive reasoning skills you've got. I don't think an amateur could have picked us out of a crowd like that. Freaking amateurs! Are you sure you're a traveler? <laughs> Please, don't look at me with such suspicious eyes. Those cold, flickering eyes of Ember. Just like a glass of exquisite brandy. You just make me want to kiss you and hold you in my arms. <laughs> what? You're a bold one, aren't you? Oh, wait a minute, you. Are you one of those men who likes other boys? <laughs> I just can't help myself when I see something beautiful standing before my eyes. Daughters of serenity, sons of elegance. Supernal melodies and cleansing landscapes. Masterpieces and stories to move the soul. And last but not least, the most exquisite in food and drink. For things such as these are those which pique my interest. Oh, so you're a pervert, just like I thought. <laughs> he sure is. Yep, definitely a pervert. <laughs> you know, there's there's always got to be a pervert in each story arc. <sighs> How dreadful it is that genius is misunderstood in every generation. I feel as if my delicate glass heart is about to be broken. Broken? You, with your magnificent black hair. Please, comfort me in my time of need. I'm going to have to pass. You've already scarred me for life as it is. <laughs> I've heard strange conversations in my day, but this one is worth remembering. The look on that kid's face. Huh. <laughs> hey, you three! Uh-oh. Oh, it's the soldier from earlier. The general has just returned. I just spoke to him about the matter, and he said he'll meet you now. Uh-oh. Really? Yeah, so come to the barracks with me immediately. Don't tell me what to do. You're not my father. Jerk. Wow, that was much quicker than I thought. I guess the baseball game ended early, due to rain. Yeah, now at least maybe we'll be able to find out what's going on. Okay, then let's be off, shall we? <laughs> He's coming with what us. What are you following us around for? <laughs> Your timing is excellent. You didn't miss a beat in exiting behind us. It seemed almost natural. Scarily so. Ah, you noticed. Everything about you all just seems so interesting. I thought I'd take a gander. Please, don't mind me. Carry on, my good gent and mademoiselles. Of course we're going to mind. Now get, you. Shoo! Shoo! <laughs> Scrooge. Poor guy. He just wants a friend. Who was that guy? Seriously, what was his deal? He's not normal, that's for sure. Getting rid of that weirdo was probably better not only for ourselves, but a service for the world at large, too. Now let's hurry and meet with the general. Of course, we're going to be seeing a lot of that guy. <laughs> Alrighty then. I could hear some arguing. Was there some kind of problem with another traveler? No, 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 no. Nothing big like that. That aside, could you let us meet with the general? Yeah, he's inside. His office is the last door on the left. Cool. Make sure you don't go wandering around in other places where you're not permitted. Don't tell me what to do, sir. Do, 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 do. I think we can talk to someone in here. 
with the airliner stopped, I had to travel here on foot. Now, how long do they expect to keep a merchant from the Empire such as myself waiting? I'm even finished reading the book I brought to pass the time. Holding on to it is, is just going to add to my load, so I'll gladly give it to you free of charge. Here. Carnelia, Chapter 3! This is exactly the type of tactless action I'd expect from a small country. Maybe you should have went to that baseball game, sir. Okay, good times. Carnelia, Chapter 3. Representative of the Septian Church. The train barreled on, almost flying through the thick veil of fog. The fog is back! Droplets of water splattered against the window glass, extending out like transparent veins, and continued to wriggle back and forth under the pressure of the swiftly passing wind. Placing the temple of my head against the glass, I stared blankly down at the tickets in my hand. Luckily they weren't digital tickets, or John would have complained. And rubbed the two of them together between my fingers. I... I... I would be traveling by train to the border city, far south of its imperial cousin. And then to reach the liberal kingdom, I would have a transfer to an airship. Both of my tickets were first class, but not the highest end seats available. Ben and Greg called a baseball game! <laughs> I wonder if anyone lost their lunch. The passenger car was nearly at full capacity, but, but for some peculiar reason, nobody had seated themselves in the space next to mine. As I mused about the empty sea, it occurred to me that Mict may have purchased the spot ahead of time, leading it vacant on purpose. There was no doubt in my mind that he was being paid handsomely to make sure the job was done and done well. Will you be traveling to the liberal kingdom, sir? Right around the time my trip on the rails had passed its halfway mark, I was met with a sudden question, and set up with a start. My eyes searched for the one who asked it. There, standing in the aisle, was a single woman with a radiant complexion being, beaming down at me. She, she was holding a baseball for some reason. She wore a coat with overlapping buckles, secured slightly above her breast, and appeared to be in her mid-thirties. Gingerly her knees and pointing her finger at the empty seat beside me, she asked, do you mind? With a tilt of her head, she indicated the rear of the passenger car, where swirling smoke saturated the air and softly muttered, The smell from the tobacco smoke is just dreadful. Freaking smokers! Wordlessly, I nodded and dragged my bag from its place on the floor, moving it over by the window to the opposite side of my feet that Billy had f fallen out of earlier. The woman expressed her thanks and delicately sat herself down in the seat next to mine. For being a perfect stranger, she talked on endlessly, and I appropriately reciprocated the conversation by saying that I was on my way to the liberal kingdom on business as an orbit specialist. Her story was that she was on a mission of mercy for the church and had an errand to fulfill in the border city. Just so you know, people sometimes refer to me as sister, she went on. Of course, it's just a nickname. She... She recrossed her black leather boot-clad legs and let out a sort of suppressed titter from the back of her throat as she made mention of this. Sister Carnelia was her nickname. Of course, Carnelia is the name of this novel. Imagine that. We continued on in this fashion, subjecting ourselves to a variety of idle banter about baseball and other assorted sports topics. And, and as the time drew on, the sun overhead began to dip in its arc, crossing the celestial meridian and descending it into the west. Each time the moving train cleared a grove of trees, the entire vehicle, passenger cars and all, was bathed in a warm apricot hue, flooding into the cabins, creating a majestic spectacle. I gaped at the carousicating effect, and in doing so, locked eyes with Sister Carnelia, right at the moment the brilliance of the sinking western light seeped into her rich brown irises, causing them to give off an exquisite rubescent sparkle. The glimpse made me wonder if the origin of her nickname was somehow related to the color of her eyes being likened under the luster of a polished Carnelian stone. The train gradually began to decelerate, and Sister Carnelia returned to our original seat in order to collect her bags. As a matter of habit, I checked my bag in orbit and found both 
the junk paper covered package and the magical device fastened into my trousers inner pocket by a series of ch chain stitches exactly where and how i'd left it a woman's voice came over the intercom system announcing that the train would be arriving on schedule and the rainy weather that's that 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 ruined the earlier baseball game what was to be expected at our destination at the conclusion of the announcements, a number of disappointed sighs could be heard coming from along the rows of seats. Raindrops pattered against the window outside as the looming silhouette of the overcast city came into view. The station's signal lamp emitted an angular light which was scattered with a refractive effect by the falling droplets of water. Then came a spine-chilling metallic sound followed by the jolt of the orbital engine's reversing thrust as the locomotive at the front of the train lurched to a halt. Over the loudspeaker came another announcement asking passengers to ensure that they did not leave their baggage behind. And with that, several people stood up and crowded into the aisle, watching a station worker in uniform as he waved a small flag amidst the falling rain. I picked up my bag and rose to my feet. I crossed paths with Sister Carnelia as I attempted to step into the aisle and, and allow me room to pass. She suddenly tripped and fell forward. That's too bad. Grabbing onto my shoulder for support, she picked herself up and, with an embarrassed smile, let me by. I gave her a short bow in line and general etiquette practices, then headed for the exit ahead of her. Following my lead, Sister Carnelia shuffled along closely behind me, so close in fact that it felt as if she would step on my heels. Isn't that very nice? Something about it just didn't feel right. Instinctively sliding my right hand into my pocket, I searched for my orbit. But the brass feeling I had grown accustomed to was nowhere to be felt. In an instant, I felt my arm being twisted behind my back by someone, or something with incredible strength. The sleek sound of a blade being unsheathed and then a warning prick of the tip of my back indicated the seriousness of, uh, of the situation. I have what you're looking for, Toby, whispered Sister Carnelia in an almost inaudible tone, her lips barely moving just behind my right ear. Let's tr let's not try a a anything either, shall we? I'd hate to see your afternoon spoiled any more than it's going to be. And 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 and, and, and to show that she meant business, Sister Carnelia slightly altered the angle of her grip on my wrist, causing an explosion of agony that sent sparks flashing behind my eyes. Looks like Toby's in in some trouble now. That's too bad. All the customers here are off-duty soldiers and travelers waiting to enter or leave the country, basically. Most of these customers have been here so long, I know them by sight. Oh yeah? The Royal Army has blocked off the Ison Road. Now all those from the Empire wishing to leave the country are stuck here. That man over there with the blonde hair seems to be in the same situation. So, have you changed your mind about taking me with you? In your dreams! <laughs> Such a cold-hearted creature for being one so young. That's too bad. Alright. After the Hundred Days War ended, not a lot of people have wanted to travel to the Empire. I'm sure there are still a lot of complex feelings. For many people here in Liberal. Probably. The fort is on heightened alert for the time being. Therefore, I must ask you not to walk around like you own the place. It looks suspicious. <laughs> well. His office is the last door on the left. Make sure you don't go wandering around in other places where you're not permitted. Don't tell me what to do. You jerk stand. Ba, ba, ba. I was supposed to be off duty today, but then we received an order to maintain ready status here in the fort. Is that right? Do do. It's barracks. I was involved in the search for the missing airliner until late last night, so I'm dead tired. That's a shame. A damn shame. Public shaming. 
the end of the hall on the left. It looks like this is the general's room. I'm not gonna go there just yet. The door is locked. Let's go down into the bay. There's a freaking dungeon here! Keep this dungeon in mind, it'll be important later. You can probably guess why. There's the roof. Because of what happened ten years ago, all the guards here are very tense. Hope we never have another breach of this gate by the Imperial Army. Hopefully. The border is always confronted with threats from the Empire. Therefore, we, we, we must be extremely prudent in our actions, whatever we do. Otherwise, it could possibly give them a pretext to invade again. You never know, man. You never freaking know. Uh, 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 uh. Alright. The end of the hall on the left. Shut up. Knockity McKnockerson. Right. Here goes nothing. Are you here on behalf of Mayor Maybell? That's right. Very well. Come inside. Thank you for seeing us. How you doing? I'm glad that you came. My name is Morgan. N nice beard you got there, sir. I have been tasked with guarding the Hakin Gate by Her Majesty, Queen Alicia. It's an honor to meet you, sir. We are all here on behalf of Mayor Maybell. Please, pardon our intrusion during such a busy time. There's no need to apologize. I've known Maybell since she was but a child. Oh. I couldn't imagine ignoring her request, much less one for the mayor. Alright then, would you please read this first? Hand it over Mayor Maybell's letter. My that set us fell off. That's no good. <clears> hmm. <throat> hmm. So it's about the missing airliner, is it? Under ordinary circumstances, that information would be strictly confidential. But considering this is a request coming from her, I'll tell you everything I know. Cool. <laughs> Sweet! Sweet! Hmm? Why are you happy about something that doesn't concern you? Crap, I should have kept my mouth shut. The mayor appears quite distraught over the situation. And so we've wanted to do anything we can to assist her. I see. Well, I'm glad to hear that she's been blessed with some good people around her. Let me get right down to things and explain the status of our search efforts. Please do. The airliner Lynn disappeared on its way to Roland after taking off from the Bose landing port. Presently, we have units searching all areas of the region, but we have yet to come up with anything. That's a shame. So, what you're saying is the possibility of the incident being caused by monsters or an accident is fairly slim, right? If an airship of that size had crashed, it likely would have been discovered in the initial search efforts. Probably. Yes, that's exactly right. In fact, the flight route from Bose to Roland goes over some planes that allow a commanding view of the land. And of course, the probability of the airliner going down in Valeria Lake or the ocean is extremely low. Boy, am I relieved to hear that it's probably not a worst-case scenario like that. So, if those have been ruled out, then that leaves the door open to the possibility that the airship could have been taken, right? Which makes me think that the only remaining motives must be to loot the cargo or demand a ransom for the hostages. In other words, a hijacking, right? Also, considering the geographical conditions, it could have been a covert operation carried out by the Imperial Army. And that would be really big news if that were the case. Hmm. <sighs> What's the matter, General? I was just thinking that that's quite an impressive assessment for some civilians. We also considered the possibility that the Imperial Army was involved, so we have enforced strict regulations on the flow of information. Information. An international incident, if taken lightly, could result in another war. Uh-oh. War. Not war! But, 
Thanks to the small mercies of Adios, the possibility for another conflict disappeared early this morning. A certain organization sent a letter to the royal family and Orville Ship Company, claiming responsibility and demanding a ransom for the passengers. A certain organization? This organization goes by the name of the Capua family. Uh-huh. The Capua family? Oh, it couldn't be who I think it is, could it? It certainly appears to be that way. The Sky Bandits who have been operating in the shadows in the Bose region and are led by three siblings at their head. Uh-oh. I take it you've heard of them? You're damn right, we have. Not only have we heard of them, we just had a run-in with them in Rollant. I just can't believe those good-for-nothing thieves have managed to create such a big incident here in Bose. Estelle! <laughs> Oops. You had a run-in with them in the Roland? I had heard that some of their gang had showed up in the Roland region, but... Hmm. I think he's on to us. <laughs> yeah, because of you and your big mouth. I see now. I thought the way you were able to analyze this situation was strange for mere civilians. But I never would have guessed that a girl and a couple of kids like you were bracers! Ruh -roh. Who are you calling kids? Just for the record, Mayor Maybell did in fact request that we come here and talk to you. Silence, deceivers! Uh-oh. Get in here, men! Ruh -roh. He looks pretty. Deepest. So this is how a hard-nosed military man acts, eh? What's the matter, General? Did these visitors try to pull anything funny? These braces need to be shown the door! Throw them out immediately! We're being thrown out of the library, didn't you know? What is your problem, old man? Trying to brush us off like bugs. <laughs> You're no different. Hiding your identity so you could try and finagle some information out of me. It's because you pulled underhanded actions like that that braces can't be trusted. Just where do you get off calling it finagling? It's your own fault since you didn't share the information with the guild to begin with. Nonsense! Who in their right mind would leave an incident this big in the hands of a mere civilian group? I swear, of all the stupid things Maybell could have tried to pull, hiring a bunch of kids like this and getting in the way of our search party. How about you cut with the crap, General? Why do you think we've had to come all the way from Roland to begin with? It's because when it comes down to it, you military morons can't do your job. <laughs> what did you say? Holy cow. Cher is really pissed, all right. Fight it, dude. For the past few months, you've known about the string of burglaries which seemed to be the work of the Sky Bandits, right? And who, knowing full well it was them, dumped the workload onto the guild instead of looking into it themselves like they should have, huh? And now, the second this incident happens, you get on your high horse with an attitude. He gets up on his soapbox! Yet you've got nothing to show for it. No hostages or even the location of the missing airliner. Don't you think that's an embarrassment to the entire kingdom? <laughs> Silence, girl! The military is an organization that runs on discipline and does not take action on a whim! Unlike a group I know who didn't think ahead and let the Sky Bandits escape, so enough with your insolence! So you're really looking for a fight, aren't you? How sad it is to see such discord. <laughs> Here we go! <laughs> Strife brings nothing to be born, but only extends the barren wilderness within our hearts. Let me sing a requiem for you all. One to soothe your parched souls. A gentle yet wistful tune to bathe your brittle spirits 
and cause the deserts of your hearts to bloom. Looks like you all understood what I was trying to get across. You did a great job. What is it that is most precious above all? That's love and peace, baby. <laughs> he coughed. I, I think it's about time for the search party to be returning with their reports. That's right, General. I should get back to my duties. And make sure you don't let those kids in again. Oh, and cancel any further checks on the travelers along the Ison Road. Having these kids around any longer would just be an eyesore. Right away, sir. He ran away! What a coward. I wish we could escape. He's still right behind us, isn't he? I like the way it looks all glitched out for some reason. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no matter what country you visit, military men lack romanticism. But you lot, on the other hand, appear to appreciate my aesthetic sense. You know, maybe we should get going ourselves. Y yeah, good idea. We had a bit of trouble, but we did manage to get some information. After we head back to Bo's, how about we think about our future plan of attack? Hmm? W where are you going? W wait for me! Uh, I mean, please, wait for me! <laughs> Let me try and introduce myself again. I'm Olivier Lenheim, a wandering bard and musician by trade. <laughs> As you already know, I am an Erebonian touring your fair liberal. I'm Estelle, and... Now wait a minute! Why do we have to introduce ourselves to you? Easy, Estelle. He did intercede for us back there. I'm Joshua. And I'm Sherazard. Things were getting pretty heated, and I'm glad you stepped in before something really bad happened. <laughs> Let me just say thanks. Ha! Huh. You've got nothing to thank me for. I only did what any person who loves beauty and peace would have done. However, if you insist, how about going out on a date with me for a day? For a day? I'm going to have to pass on that. First of all, I don't have that sort of free time. Hmm, that's too bad. All right then, I guess I'll accept Joshua as a substitute. <laughs> what do I have to do with any of this? Please don't involve me in your questionable humor. Questionable humor! <laughs> well, that's odd. I didn't mean it as a joke. Saying that makes you even more questionable. Now just wait a minute. How come you didn't invite me on a date? You? Um, I don't know how to put this, but you're a bit lacking in the sexy department. <laughs> You might want to think about taking a lesson or two from your friends here. Well, 
you'll excuse me for not being sexy. <laughs> and just what do you mean by saying I should take a few lessons from Joshua? Could calm down, Estelle. I think you're cute enough just the way you are. Though I guess it's true. You are a bit lackluster in the sexy category. <laughs> what did you just say? Oh, good grief. Anyway, like I said before, we're busy. I'm sorry there's not a better way to thank you, but we've got to get going. Then how about... You take me along with you to the city of Bows. This is my first time in the borough, after all, and I'd like to request a guide. Well, if that's all that you want, then I don't mind. Shara! Now just wait a second! It's the least we can do, and we're headed to the same place anyway. Plus, acting as a guide is one of Abracer's many duties. Girl. Ugh, <sighs> alright. Guess we're stuck with him until then. That's a shame. But what if he tries to sink his poisonous fangs of lust into Joshua? Uh, Estelle? Don't you worry, Joshua. I'll save you from his perverted attentions if he tries anything funny. <laughs> what is it exactly you think he'll try? Please don't refer to me like I'm some sort of ferocious beast. I'd rather that you call me a hunter of love. Even Love Stealer wouldn't be that bad of a title either. <laughs> Are you right in the head? So how about it, everyone? Shall we leave for bows? I'm counting on you all to get me there safely. Now let us be off. Who died and made you leader? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, you. I'm not done warning you about the grisly fate that awaits you if you sully Joshua's innocence. <laughs> so we have Olivia on the party. Da, 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 da. He's in the same level. Olivier Lenheim. Of course, he uses orbital guns. He's a pretty good mage. Da, da. Needler. A popular orbital gun made by the Empire's Reinford Company. The first mention of the Reinford Company. So he's pretty much got the best equipment right now. You can give him some of this stuff if, if you so desire. Barbat. No, oh, no, leave me alone! He's got EP1. Max EP up by 5%. Hit one, dexterity up by five, attack one. You can give him evade one if you want. That's what I don't really care about, but you know. Yeah. Obviously sent since he's got a gun, it's good to have him in the back. Du, du. Oh, his S break is Howling Bullet. Fires off an explosive energy shot. Pretty good. The road has finally been reopened. Indeed, it has. And now that I've got my entry permit, I can finally go to Bose. Cool. The general's voice is as loud as ever. Isn't it, though? He's a loud little bastard, as far as I'm concerned. In fact, we could hear it all the way here inside the bar. Whenever the general yells, all the young recruits come running in, 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 in here in fear. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so the general has finally let his thunder fall here at the Hawking Gate, has he?
No doubt his troops screwed up something real bad this time. <laughs> Not quite, but, you know. Ba -ba 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 Even if you try to live a serious life, you're still going to have your ups and downs. That's why living a life on a whim and taking it easy is the best way to go. Take it easy! I can hear the general yelling all the way out here. What in the world did you guys do to piss them off like that? The world may never- The world is a vampire! Please don't hold it against me. But after getting my ear yelled off by the general, I can't let you through. He got paraded! Damn right he did. That was freaking...